is your question. Just fourteen seconds. Left. Okay. Right. So, if you have read and understood, considering it procedural skills station, kindly tell me after you've seen the listing, theater listing, how would you order them? Uh, okay, um, I will keep them uh, as they are arranged. The strangulated hernia yes. is the first, and then uh, the vertical abscess is uh, second, and the M MR and the missing resistant staph aureus patient is the third. All right. This third patient happens to be diabetic patient. Why would you place it number three? Uh, because there is a patient, uh, because of two things, the patient has a uh, uh, I'm a serious resistant staph aureus to prevent cross infection between him and other patients. So it uh, might be the last patient. And also the patient uh, uh, needs to, uh, uh, to uh, he, wants, he wants to have a, ple a pelone amputation, uh, which, an, which is an, um, uh, considered an expedited case, uh, not an uh, emergency or uh, urgent case. Okay. Uh, according to USA's NRCS guidelines, how would you order the uh, place the order or prioritize the cases? Okay, uh, in case of a strangulated uh, inguinal hernia, um, um, it is uh, an um, uh, it is an emergency um, emergency case, um, uh, because the patient uh, has to be uh, resuscitated at first, and then uh, the patient has uh, has to be have uh, um, the operation done within the first twenty four hours. Uh, and also, uh, the patient is uh, COPD, uh, which uh, uh, um, so uh, no, no. I think the COPD has no role here. And no. second, the patient, and the second patient has uh, a diverticular uh, abscess, uh, but the patient uh, is allergic to uh, iodine uh, and uh, penicillin. Uh, um, in case of uh, allergy to iodine, uh, the patient. Uh, uh, um, uh, actually, has to be... this is not the answer. I wanted you to tell me what kind of surgeries are operated or considered emergency surgery, and they are operated immediately. Okay, in emergency, in 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 in, in, in immediate uh, cases, we have to do uh, uh, operations for uh, uh, problems which uh, cause uh, for life saving and limb saving. Yes. Uh, this is an this is the uh, urgent uh, uh, this is an urgent case or, or immediate cases. Life uh, it has to be done uh, in the first uh, uh, in the first few minutes of decision of operation. This is for life saving and for limb saving within the first six hours. Uh, and this uh, might uh, might be like uh, uh, extradural hemorrhage, any uh, vascular injury. Yes. Uh, and 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 second uh, uh, and second cases are the uh, emergency cases uh, where the patient has to be first uh, resuscitated and then operated and uh, this will occur in the first 24 hours of decision uh, yes. and this might be like uh, acute peptic ulcer uh, and also uh, open fracture in tbm yes. okay good. and like this thank you uh, can you please tell me according to the nice guidelines what are the pre-operative glycemic control values? Okay, the patient uh, uh, has not to be uh, uh, admitted uh, through uh, through over uh, the uh, through over the night before the operation, yes. and the patient has to uh, miss only one meal, uh, okay. and the patient uh, has to uh, has to.
be normal glycemic in the pre intra and post operative uh, uh, setting and the patient yes. uh, uh, will has to be uh, random blood sugar blood glucose level should be measured hourly and okay. uh, the patient has to be prioritized in the list uh, yeah. and uh, the the, uh, the needed uh, fluid for him uh, will be um, uh, 0.4 sodium chloride yes. uh, plus 5 percent glucose uh, yes. plus 1.5 to 3 uh, um, percentage uh, uh, potassium chloride um, and the patient also um, uh, uh, has to uh, uh, has to recover his uh, has to reco has to be given analgesic and uh, uh, anti-emetic early post-operatively to, uh, uh, for, uh, for, for uh, early glycemic control, uh, mm -hmm. as in the pre-operative uh, um, in, in the pre uh, settings, and the, and the patient has to, give, to be given insulin instead of any uh, oral uh, anti-hyperglycemic uh, anti drug. Okay. And uh, my question was, at what level the value of the blood sugar would you keep? Okay, from 6 to 10 uh, millimole per liter. Very good. Okay, when it comes to children, how would you how would you place the children if they need to be operated? Okay, if children has to be prioritized in the operating list uh, yes. uh, to, to decrease uh, the fear uh, uh, from the patient and from the children. Yes, and they should be placed earlier. Early, uh, early okay, in the rest. Yes. Uh, the first patient, strangulated hernia uh, patient, is also COPD with pacemaker. So what are the things that you have to keep in your mind while placing this patient on the list? Okay, in the COPD, uh, I have uh, a preoperative uh, uh, pre procedures and, uh, and, uh, and a preoperative procedures and uh, uh, post-operative procedures. The preoperative yes. procedures is, is the patient has to uh, uh, to do uh, um, exercises, uh, physiotherapy exercises for his uh, respiratory uh, uh, for his respiratory drive, uh, and also he can um, uh, put, uh, and also uh, he should stop smoking for weeks before the operation, and also he has uh, to do insensitive uh, spirometry and uh, positive pressure and intraoperatively uh, positive. Uh, uh, intermittent inter intermittent post pressure uh, uh, respiration and the post operative liberation has to be kept upright uh, to uh, to release the uh, uh, the pressure of the diaphragm on the lungs uh, and to uh, to be able to uh, uh, breathe normally and if any uh, and he, and I might uh, also include the, um, a chest consultant uh, for the patient. Uh, uh, to prescribe him some uh, some some drugs for uh, better uh, respiration. Okay. And, How would and you for take the care of uh, patients' warfarin? Okay, uh, warfarin uh, according to the uh, according to my trust uh, policy, and I can also include uh, a hematologist, uh, and I and I need to classify the patient uh, if he is uh, high risk or low risk uh, thromboembolic uh, uh, for thromboembolism. In yes. case of uh, low risk thromboembolism, the patient has uh, to be has, has to stop his warfarin in five days before the operation. Yes. And uh, after the operation, uh, when um, when the patient can tolerate uh, oral intake and uh, and the patient is not in bleeding and no risk for bleeding, he can uh, resume his uh, warfarin tablets. Okay. While uh, while patients with high risk thromboembolism, patient has to stop his warfarin okay. uh, tablets five days before uh, for the operation and Good. has to be admitted to the hospital and to start the molecular weight. Um, heparin instead of warfarin and the uh, heparin has to be stopped at 12 hours before the operation and the post operatively when the patient uh, uh, is not not in bleeding and no risk for bleeding he can resume warfarin and i need to draw to withdraw uh, some bloods for inr to be kept uh, between two and three uh, and after this i can stop heparin and uh, resume warfarin. all right thank you uh, this first patient with the pacemaker what precautions would you take during the during the surgery Okay, uh, I must uh, we, um, during the surgery. Okay, yes. during the surgery, uh, I have to use a mono uh, a bipolar instead of monopolar. And if I use monopolar, I, I might to be uh, very limited use and uh, for uh, only short uh, bursts. And for um, for bipolar, um, it, it is better to be used. Uh, and uh, also, the, uh, the, the, the there might be a cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Good. It should be available in the hospital yes. and the temporary and pacing uh, uh, should be available also uh, in the hospital. Yes, and ECG should be monitored. Yes, yes, and so, ECG should be monitored. Yes, all right. the, uh, Can you please uh, tell me the difference between bipolar and mono, monopolar diatomy? 
Yes, bipolar dysthermia has two active electrodes. So, uh, so the electric current has uh, uh, has to transfer through a small amount of tissues. Uh, but the monopolar um, has uh, only one electrode. So, the uh, the electric current uh, might uh, transfer to uh, a seventy centimeter square of tissues. Uh, and it is the, the, the also the monopolar uh, uh, will have an, an, an return electrode. Uh, which might, which has to be, uh, uh, which has to be fitted uh, on the patient uh, to prevent any thermal injury, um, and, and uh, okay. th that's all. Good. Uh, the patient with diverticular uh, diverticular abscess is allergic to penicillin and iodine. How would you manage that patient? Okay. Uh, the, uh, the allergy to iodine has to be uh, uh, has to be. Uh, uh, we, we should use chlorhexidine instead of iodine. And yes. in case of penicillin, we can use uh, vancomycin or uh, ticoplanin uh, together with uh, gentamicin also can uh, uh, be used. Okay, good. Right. Yes, uh, right. I think I have asked you all the questions. Right, yeah. Yeah, good. Thank you.